I'm outside a bunker set into the rock and the, and the ice and the snow up here around 2,900 meters in the Stelvio National Park, high in the Italian Alps. And this was once home during the First World War to a platoon of around 15 Austro-Hungarian soldiers. And it's bunkers and military emplacements and trenches like this that are coming to light as the glaciers in this region melt. How close were the positions, the Italians and the Austro-Hungarians? Unbelievably close, exactly in this sector of the front, on the other side of the descendant slope, the Filon dei Monti Italian position was less than 500 meters away. They could shout at one another. So we're walking inside a trench built by the Austro-Hungarian forces. It's these sorts of remains which are coming to light as the glaciers in the Italian Alps melt. Just down here, during the First World War, we had a huge glacier whose name was Natigliole Glacier. And now the glacier is totally disappeared. This flat area is what happens after the melt of the glacier. And the entrance of this cave shelter it's possible to, to look inside because the permafrost collapsed and the entrance is open. Right now, we're inside an artificial cave just barracked by Austro-Hungarian troops in uh, June, September 1915, after the conquest of the, of the peak, which is just above us, which is 3,000. 94 meters right now here. We're just below 3,000 meters. This used to be a barrack uh, That could host as many as 15 Austro-Hungarian soldiers. Why are these First World War military emplacements now coming to light? This is possibly a positive side effect of climate change in the sense that 100 years ago this mountain was part itself of a glacier. You'd get the chance to uh, cast a very quick glance upon the rocks only during the warmest days in August. This is no longer the case. The glacier has retreated. The ice is melting. And therefore places like, that, like this, which were essentially frozen solid in time for a hundred years, are coming back to life. So as, as the ice melts, as the glaciers melt, these places are compromised from an archaeological point of view. Absolutely. This is exactly the point. We have an opportunity, but it's an opportunity that must be grasped very quickly because these places not only conserve um, all sorts of artifacts, but scientific traces of how life used to be from a botanical, entomological, glaciological point of view um, 100 years ago. But the traces which are left in this ice must be harnessed quickly before the ice melts um, and it becomes impossible to scientifically analyze all the data that these places give us. If you look there in the back, you see that there's 10 meters of solid ice, which is still occupying nearly half of the space of this, of this barrack. What are some of the relics that you found inside this bunker? The most incredible findings uh, may be found in here. This is some hay, which is more than a hundred years old. This is what soldiers used to sleep on in this, um, in this barrack. You have uh, pieces of uniform, as you can see. You can see this probably was utilized to strengthen the wooden structures, as you can see up here, which uh, would be constituted by wood, some isolating material, which would touch upon the rock. How much has the glacier reduced? It reduced uh, of about 40% in area uh, during the last 50 years. And uh, each summer, uh, due to uh, summer melting, uh, about uh, six meters uh, of ice thickness uh, is lost. The thickness of about uh, six meters uh, is lost, uh, is melt. During the last uh, century, this glacier has lost uh, a thickness uh, uh, stronger, higher than 100 meters. You can see the river in the valley in the 50s of the last century the glacier tongue uh, was located and uh, the glacier tongue was able to reach uh, this sector of the valley 50 years ago 